What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic Which is very very important and the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using And how they perform for you during the season you don't have to follow all the tips This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions and what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those who are out there who may be new to the game and just want some help, or for those who are out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players you could sign for a certain team in career mode. So in today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys, we are going to take a look at the Italian side, Napoli. Napoli currently competing in the Serie A and tonight playing against Real Madrid in the Champions League round of 16 second leg at the Stadio San Paolo. And I thought Napoli would be a pretty interesting choice because a couple of weeks ago I did Sevilla I did Monaco so I thought why not it's a midweek Champions League night why not do another Champions League team I'm yet to do so far and funny enough it's the only team out of four playing tonight I'm yet to do in this series so we're going to take a look at Napoli then and uh, as you can see their objectives for the first season are I must say quite routine now sometimes when I uh, show you these clubs and I show you the objectives I think to myself well those objectives could be quite tough to hit in the first season so my signings may not help very much but I must say look Looking at these objectives, I think you'll probably be fine. Uh, in the league, they have to finish in a Champions League place, which is top three in this area, not top four like other uh, leagues uh, across Europe, but uh, finish in a top three. Uh, so finish first, second or third. In the Cup, the Cop uh, the Copa Nacional, uh, they have to finish in the semi-finals, which again is definitely achievable. And in the Champions League, reached around uh, reached a quarter-final stage, I should say, uh, which is uh, one stage further than what they're currently competing at in real life as of right now. Uh, so yeah, to finish in the uh, top three to reach semi-finals of the cup and also reach the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Now their budget to start season one off is 34.5 million pounds which is actually quite surprising because I thought they might have a little bit more money than that after selling Gonzalo Higuain for a ridiculous sum uh, in the summer transfer window. Uh, also more recently as well sold Manolo Gabbiadini to Southampton but 34.5 million pounds not a bad starting budget whatsoever and this is their squad as well. I must say it's a pretty decent team you know I must say it's a pretty pretty decent team I was sort of downplaying the budget there but let's be honest here this is a really really decent team uh, every single player other than the fullbacks in the first 11 as things stand right now when you load the game up for the first time are 80 plus overall that's always a sign of a really good team on FIFA at least in my eyes uh, and they have a few players with a contract coming at the end of the year as well uh, a couple of noteworthy ones such as Uniga and uh, also Rog who's the only guy I would recommend giving a contract to if you don't know about this guy he is 75 overall 20 years old Cam his contract's upcoming the end of the year whatever you do don't let this guy go I'd recommend selling every or selling or letting go every one of those other players there that have their deals up in 12 months but don't let Rog go keep him here he's got 86 potential I do believe he's a very good young player in the game a very good young cam don't let him go keep him here tie him down to a long-term deal and make him your future cam for Napoli uh, as for players that are loaned out as you can see it's quite a thin squad or so it appears when you look at the squad management section but it's mainly because they've got a ton of players currently loaned out from the team. I'd recommend recalling two of them for around £1.3 million. Jonathan de Guzman and also Duvan Zapata as well. Uh, one cam and one striker. Both of those players are in the mid to high 70s for overall. And they're good enough to go straight into the first team and benefit you in some way. Either on the bench or in the resi. So make sure you get those guys back. It'll cost you a small fee. But get them back because they're very decent players to have. And in a small squad like this, they'll be very useful players. Even if they're not not going straight in the first 11 or if you like you can recall them and then sell them on for a bit of profit uh, but as for sales for Napoli as well I would recommend selling two of the three goalkeepers they currently have right now now you might think why is that they've got Pepe Reina the ex Liverpool goalkeeper and uh, also Raphael and another guy called Sepe I think it is well Raphael and Sepe uh, let's just call him Sepe uh, have the same overall and the same potential 74 and 77 they are second and third choice goalkeepers you only need one of those guys you can either sell Raphael or Sepe I'd recommend Raphael personally for around 3.2 million pounds and I'd also recommend selling their current number one Reiner as well now Reiner is not a bad goalkeeper uh, Liverpool fans will tell you that uh, the years he spent at Anfield he was always uh, a pretty reliable goalkeeper at times but he was always capable of making mistakes uh, although it's not really too important in FIFA I suppose but uh, I would say personally he's in his uh, early to mid 30s now 
you might want to look at bringing in a new number one. Uh, for me, I always liked Pepe Reina. His distribution was pretty solid at Anfield, but he was someone that always had a mistake in him. So why I just called him reliable there, I don't know. But I would recommend selling him, bringing in a younger goalkeeper, and I'll show you who my number one target would be in just a moment's time. And also I'd recommend selling Raul Albiol as well, another Spanish player that's currently in their early to mid 30s. I'd recommend selling him if you can. We get about 12 million pounds for him. So free sales there, and I'd recommend letting go every single one of those players. Now, once you've sold uh, Raul Raphael, and you've also sold Reina. You're only left with Sepe, as we're calling him now, uh, who's 74 overall. You're probably going to be wanting a new number one that is of the same sort of overall as Pepe Reina was. Well, this is the guy I would target. Genoa goalkeeper, 23 years old, 83 overall. Already at 23 years old. His name's Mattia Perrine. And to begin with, to begin with, he's got 94 reflexes. The guy is an absolute animal. I put in a valuation bid, and I must admit I got very lucky here. Genoa accepted it straight away. As I always say, I do encourage valuation bids when putting in bids for players straight away because you just never know. Nine times out of ten, it's not going to come off, but every now and then you might be surprised. And as you can see, Genoa accepted that valuation bid of £23 million. You might have to spend a little bit more money on him, but this guy would be a great replacement for Pepe Reina. He's the same overall as the Spanish goalkeeper right now, but he's ten years younger. So you're getting someone who's not a step worse or a step forward, in fairness. He's someone who's just as good as the old number one and he's 10 years younger with more potential as Perrine at his full peak will get to 88. That's his full potential. That's his peak. 88 overall. Now, when you think he's got 90 reflexes now, imagine when he's hitting 88. He'll be unbelievable, right? So definitely recommend signing Perrine and he's Italian too. So it's, it's I don't know why. It's always nice for me to sign players that come from the same nation as the club. Uh, but uh, yeah, Perrine, I think would be a great choice and uh, I definitely recommend signing him if you could. And as you can see, we did get a little bit lucky here. Genoa accepted the valuation bid and we said Mattia Perrine sign that ting and come to the Stadio San Paolo. So yeah, definitely sell Rafael and Reina because again, you're not going to need uh, those three goalkeepers. You can you can, you can can afford to sell at least one of those guys. Anyway, if you don't want to sell Reina, for example, at least sell one of Rafael or Sepa. You don't, you don't need three of those guys. So definitely recommend selling one of those or two if you want. And I sold two and brought in a new number one. That was my uh, preferred strategy of choice in this episode. Uh, as for new signings, I'd also recommend a new left back as well. Now, Napoli do have Gulam who isn't a bad option at 79 overall, 25 years old. But with Napoli, I think you can do a little bit better, especially when you want to try and compete with Juventus in years to come in the Serie A. That's going to be a hard task, hence why you need to build for the future and sign players with good potential. One of those guys I'd recommend for the left-back role is this guy right here, Levin Kuzawa, the former Monaco fullback who now plays for Paris Saint-Germain. He's 80 overall, 23 years old, so only one rating higher and two years younger than Goulam, but he's been potential is where it's at. He's got 87 for potential. At his peak, he'll be an absolute monster. He'll probably cost you around 20 to 22 million pounds, uh, which is a little bit over his valuation right now. We spent 20 million pounds to get hold of the Frenchman, but he would be a really, really great signing. He's a step up from Goulam and has far more potential as well. He'd be a really good addition to Napoli, and I think it'd be a really smart choice as well. Uh, I also sold Maggio as well, the right back who's been at Napoli for many years now, just because he's 34 years old. He set to Greece in the first season, and you got someone who's better in high Saj and younger as well so you can afford to get go uh, get rid of Ma Maggio it won't be too big of a deal if he does finally leave the club so Kurzawa was the second signing I made then and uh, again he cost 20 million pounds which is a little bit over his valuation but he's got some very good starting stats to begin with and again I think he grows seven ratings as well at 23 years old he's a very good option for the future and someone I'd definitely recommend now as for a new right back as well that's another player uh, another area I should say I'd recommend trying to sign a new player in I would recommend Jao Cancelo for the right back slot. Now you do have High Sag, who I just mentioned briefly there, 79 overall and also has 82 potential. Not a bad option, but again, you want to compete with Juventus for Serie A titles and Coppa Nationale, uh, Coppa Nationales as the years go by as well. You're going to need someone a little bit better, and Jao Cancelo, despite being the same overall as High Sag, has 86 for potential. He'd be a really good option down that right side, and you can also play further forward as well in the right mid and right wing slots as well. He might uh, be a little bit pricey. Uh, Valencia, I think, wanted £19.5 million. Pounds. We got a deal accepted of £12.5 
£5 million. He's 22 years old. He'll probably take High Sadge's place in a right back slot for you straight away. And again, you're thinking of the future with Napoli. You don't need to compete for the Serie A title in the first season, but as you may have noticed on the board objectives, they want you to try and win a league title within two years. Now, if you're going to do that, you're going to need some decent players with good potential. So I definitely recommend Jao Cancelo. 86 is his potential. He's a really, really good player. He's very quick as well, Jao Cancelo. Very, very quick indeed. Very handy for a fullback uh, to try and cope with rapid wingers. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend Cancelo for a signing. We picked him up for around 12.5 million pounds. So Cancelo was the third signing I made to go alongside Kurzawa and also Perrine as well. And you can see where I'm targeting new players in this Napoli side. You saw the first 11. You know what it's about. The midfield trio is very, very strong. Alan, Jorginho, and also Captain Fantastic from my few 14 PS4 career mode, Marek Hamšík. Uh, and the attack's good as well. You've got a really, really good front three too. You've got Malik on the bench as well as Mertens is playing as the striker right now. You don't really need to worry about the midfield and the attack. The defence is where you need to make improvements and that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I did sell Pavelotti to Spurs as well for £6 million. Once you've recalled Zapata, you're not going to need him. Zapata, Milik and also Mertens playing as a striker so you can get rid of him. That's totally fine. And also I sell Kirikes to Liverpool for £6 million, I think it was. He goes back to uh, to England, to the Premier League. Uh, obviously an ex-Spurs player. And uh, yeah, you won't need Kirikes because you need to go in search of a new centre-back too. Now right now you've got Koulibaly, a really, really great player. 83 overall. You've got Maximo, which as well, 80 overall. But Maximo, which is currently on loan right now, you'd probably want a new first-choice centre-back to go alongside Koulibaly. And those two players I showed you right there, went by pretty quickly, I do apologise for that, are two of the best players you can buy for the CB role if you've got the money for it. Stefan De Vrij from Lazio and also Jonathan Tarr from Bayer Leverkusen. Now, Tarr is four years younger than Stefan De Vrij. They both have the same overall, but they both have the same potential as well. So you might sit there and say, well, surely out of these two options, you should go in for the German as he's four years younger, but they have the same potential. So don't worry about it too much if you can't uh, convince Leverkusen to let go of their youngster. If you can just sign Stefan De Vrij instead, you've got the same overall and the same potential. So really, it, it's up to you. Either one of these centre-backs would be perfect for Napoli anyway. Uh, Tari is 6'4", very, very strong, a really good player already at just 20 years old. Stefan De Vrij is very good on the ball as well. He's got the long passing trait. He's a very, very decent player. And again, I don't really do realistic signings or anything, but you could probably see this happening, right? Moving in the division instead of moving countries uh, from uh, Lazio going to Napoli. So uh, yeah, Stefan De Vrij I think would be a great signing. Or Jonathan Tarr, either or basically. It's up to you, really. We got a cheaper deal accepted with Lazio for £23 million. Pounds. Hence why I targeted him. And as you'll see, Stefan de Rye was my fourth signing for Napoli in this episode for £23 million. So quite pricey, yes. But again, you're trying to get someone in that's going to go straight into the first 11 like he will. And also someone with good potential as well for the years to come by. And he will get to 88 when he peaks as well. And just remembered, I forgot to show his stats once again. But you know what he looks like anyway. As you saw his stats a moment ago. Uh, but once you've done those four signings, you may not have any money left over. You may have a little bit of money left over. If you do have a little bit of money left over, then why not sign a new player. Now you can either keep holding the money until January and play the pre-contract game or you can go in for a new signing now in the summer and spend the rest of your budget on a new wide midfielder. That's what I would recommend. Even though Napoli don't play with wide midfielders but wingers, they're basically the same thing and I would definitely say that uh, a new wide midfielder slash winger if you will would be a really good option. Now there's four players I'd recommend here. Otavio, Malcolm, Charlie Musonda and also Christian Pulisic. All four of these players would be really good additions for Napoli and won't cost you too much money either. Pulisic is the cheaper option, but he has really good potential as well, despite being the worst in terms of overall. At currently 74 right now. But Otavio, Malcolm, Musonda, these are the three guys I would target if you did have the money. Musonda, though, is the guy I would definitely recommend out of all four of them. He's like, I mean, this guy's unbelievable. Charlie Musonda is definitely the player I would recommend bringing in if you have enough money for him. As you'll see, I got pretty desperate here, but did manage to convince Chelsea to let him go for 10 and a quarter million. Charlie Musonda, the reason why I chose him as opposed to Otavio or Malcolm or Pulisic is because this guy has five star skills and five star weak foot. It's like the holy grail for skill moves and weak foot. You, you rarely ever see players with five star, five star, but this guy is 77 overall at just 19 years old, five star, five star, and his potential is 88. This guy, when he peaks, will be an absolute monster. I mean, just absolutely incredible. So that's why I was really, really desperate to 
get Musonda as opposed to Octavio. He would have been a good signing as well, but Musonda is the better option with four uh, ratings higher for potential and also is a couple years younger and he's got five star skills and five star weak foot. So Charlie Musonda was the last player I managed to sign for Napoli. I used up my entire budget to bring in these five players and spend an awful lot of money on them as well. 88.75 million is what I spent on these five new players. But I'll tell you this right now, they would all be worth it. They are fantastic signings, or at least I would say so myself. And again, Musonda is just, I don't know, I've never had the guy before in career mode, but I really wish I can use him at some point because he's just got some unbelievable stats already at 19, 88 potential. And again, the Holy Grail, five star, five star. So 88.75 million pounds spent on five new players. Uh, I would say they're all fantastic. And again, you're looking at the future as well as the present with Napoli. Perrine, 88 potential. De Vrij, 88 potential. Musonda, 88 potential. Kurzawa, 87 potential. And Cancelo, nowhere near good enough. 86 potential, but uh, no, still. All five of these players, really, really good potential. And all five of them as well will have a role in the first team right in the first season too. And as you can see, three of the back four are new players for Napoli going into season one. And the goalkeeper's changed as well. So four out of five players in that first 11 all changed and they're all in defensive positions too that's why I said a minute ago you've got to focus on that defense the midfield's fine the attack is fine just focus on improving that defense for the present and for the future as well so as per usual we simulated the end of the season to see how Napoli would get on without my guidance after making the new signings and as you'll see what they did now they were supposed to finish in the top three in the Serie A they did that they finished in second place behind Juventus by seven points you don't need to worry about competing for the title in the first season so the second place would be a totally fine achievement again the board wants you to finish in the top three so that's totally fine worry about league titles later down the line the first season just guarantee a Champions League place for next season in the Copa Nacional they reached the final one step further than they were supposed to they were supposed to reach the semi-finals got to the final before losing to Juventus so you can see the hurdle that Napoli have in the career mode and also in the Champions League too they were supposed to reach the quarterfinals sadly they didn't hit the European objective they were knocked out by Bayern Munich who were the eventual winners of the competition in the round of 16 stage 4-3 on aggregate so I hit both my domestic objectives failed at the European objective but I would still say for a first season it's a pretty successful year you can see the stats of the players and the attributes too as they develop uh, past the uh, first season I think they would all start growing straight away as you can see by the simulation that's exactly what happens your team looks stronger it looks younger and for the future it looks a lot lot brighter and again when you're competing with Juventus for Serie A titles and Copa Nationals as well you're going to need a team that's good enough right away and also that it's going to be good enough within one to two years and that's why you need to really get the groundwork done straight away in the first couple of transfer windows. Bring in some good young talents. That's exactly what I did. And again, it's going to be very, very difficult to topple Juventus right now, who have such a, a strong hold on Italian football silverware. But I believe with the signings you'll make and also this team as it is right now, you will definitely give yourselves a chance right from the second season onwards. So those are the players I would sign for a Napoli career mode, guys. I would definitely recommend it as well. A very, very fun team indeed. And certainly a side who, again, will have a lot of battles with Juventus, but will be a fun team to develop over the years. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the tips as well, then please do leave a like as likes are of course very much appreciated and they really help channel out as well much love to you all have a great evening a great evening have a great evening tonight and i will see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon who's studying next let me know in the comment section down below